Welcome to Celeb Memorial TV, the place where we celebrate and honor the legacies of remarkable individuals whose talents and achievements have left a memorable impact on our world. In each episode, we share news, heartfelt tributes, and cherished memories of those who have recently passed. Subscribe to our channel to stay connected and join our community in remembering and celebrating these extraordinary lives. Join us as we pay tribute to their enduring contributions and keep their stories alive. Russell Morash, the pioneering television producer and director, passed away at the age of 84 on June 18. Known for his influential work in educational television, Morash's legacy includes the creation and production of beloved PBS shows such as The French Chef, The Victory Garden, This Old House, and The New Yankee Workshop. Born and raised in Lexington, Massachusetts, Russell Morash was deeply influenced by his father, who was a builder. This early exposure to craftsmanship and construction would later inform many of his television projects. In 1957, Marash graduated from Boston University's College of Fine Arts, where he honed his skills and prepared for a distinguished career in broadcasting. Marash began his journey in the entertainment industry as a cameraman at WGBH-TV, Boston's public television station. It was there in 1961 that he met the iconic Julia Child while she was promoting her cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. The overwhelming viewer response to her appearance led to the creation of The French Chef in 1962, with Morash directing from 1963 onwards. His innovative, theater-inspired directorial style, coupled with the limitations of the era's technology, required the crew to shoot each episode in one take, capturing the spontaneity and charm that became a hallmark of the show. This pioneering approach laid the foundation for a new genre of public television. Marash's creativity and dedication to educational television did not stop with culinary shows. He went on to create The Victory Garden, a series that educated viewers on gardening, and This Old House, which demystified home improvement and renovation. Both shows became staples of American television, earning widespread acclaim and a loyal following. The New Yankee Workshop, a spin-off of This Old House, was filmed in Marash's own backyard in Massachusetts, further showcasing his personal commitment to the crafts he celebrated on screen. Throughout his career, Russell Marash's work was characterized by a unique blend of practicality and passion. His shows were not just informative, but also inspirational, encouraging viewers to take on new projects and learn new skills. His legacy lives on in the countless lives he touched through his educational programming. Russell Morash is survived by his wife, Marion, their children, and grandchildren. His contributions to public television have left an indelible mark, ensuring that his vision and creativity will be remembered and appreciated for generations to come. Taylor Wiley, who passed away at the age of 56 on June 20th, was a remarkable figure whose diverse career spanned sumo wrestling, mixed martial arts, and acting. Known for his charismatic presence and generous spirit, Wiley left an indelible mark on every field he entered. Born in Honolulu, Hawaii on June 14, 1968, Wiley was of American Samoan descent. His early career saw him rise as a sumo wrestler in Japan under the Shikona Takamishu Daikichi. Standing 6 foot 2 inches and weighing nearly 440 pounds, he was a formidable presence in the ring. His sumo journey began in 1987 when he joined the Azumazeki stable and quickly made a name for himself by winning his first 14 official bouts and securing two consecutive tournament championships. His success in the Makushita division was historic as he became the first foreign-born wrestler to win the championship at that level. Although knee problems forced his retirement in 1989, his influence continued as a mentor to future Yokozuna Akabono Taro. After sumo, Wiley transitioned into mixed martial arts, competing in the inaugural Ultimate Fighting Championship in 1993 under the name Tayla Tuli. Despite his match ending in a dramatic defeat, it remains one of the most memorable David and Goliath matchups in MMA history. Wiley's larger-than-life personality found a perfect home in the entertainment industry. His acting career took off with a memorable role in the comedy film Forgetting Sarah Marshall, but he was best known for his recurring role as Kamakona Tupuola on the television series Hawaii 5-0. As Kamakona, 
Wiley brought warmth and humor to the screen, portraying a beloved character who was both an informant and an entrepreneur. His role extended to appearances in the reboot series Magnum P.I. and MacGyver. Beyond his professional achievements, Wiley was known for his kindness and community spirit. He frequently visited children at Shriners Children's Hawaii Hospital, bringing joy and hope to many young lives. His death, announced by host Lena Girl Lange on Island Life Live, was met with heartfelt tributes from friends and colleagues who remembered him for his generosity and his vibrant, larger-than-life personality. Taylor Wiley is survived by his wife and two children. His legacy of breaking barriers and spreading aloha will be remembered by fans and loved ones alike. His contributions to sumo wrestling, mixed martial arts, and television have left a lasting impact, and he will be dearly missed. Donald Sutherland, who passed away at the age of 88 on June 20th, was a Canadian actor of immense talent and versatility. With a career that spanned six decades, Sutherland was celebrated for his wide-ranging roles in film and television, earning numerous accolades, including a Primetime Emmy Award, two Golden Globe Awards, and an Academy Honorary Award in 2017. Sutherland's journey to fame began with standout performances in films such as The Dirty Dozen, Masch, and Kelly's Heroes. These roles established him as a leading actor in Hollywood, and he continued to captivate audiences with his work in Clute, Don't Look Now, and Ordinary People. His portrayal of complex characters in films like Invasion of the Body Snatchers and A Dry White Season showcased his ability to bring depth and nuance to his roles. In addition to his film career, Sutherland made significant contributions to television. His performance in the HBO film Citizen X earned him a Primetime Emmy Award, and he received a Golden Globe Award for his role in Path to War. His portrayal of President Snow in the Hunger Games franchise introduced him to a new generation of fans, further cementing his legacy as a beloved actor. Sutherland's dedication to his craft was matched by his commitment to his Canadian heritage. He was inducted into the Canadian Walk of Fame in 2000 and the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2011. He was made an Officer of the Order of Canada in 1978 and later promoted to Companion of the Order of Canada in 2019. In 2023, Canada Post issued a stamp in his honor, recognizing his contributions to the arts. Beyond his professional achievements, Sutherland was a passionate advocate for social causes. He actively participated in anti-war activism during the Vietnam War and later voiced his opposition to the Iraq War. His political engagement extended to his support for Barack Obama during the 2008 United States presidential election. Sutherland is survived by his wife, Francine Reset, and his children, Kiefer, Rosif, Angus, and Rachel, all of whom have pursued careers in the arts. His passing marks the end of an era, but his legacy lives on through his unforgettable performances and his impact on the film and television industry. Donald Sutherland will be remembered as a towering figure in cinema, a dedicated artist, and a compassionate human being. James Chance, who passed away at the age of 71 on June 18th, was an American saxophonist, keyboard player, and singer. A key figure in the No Wave movement, Chance's influence on the New York music scene from the late 1970s onward was profound and lasting. His unique combination of improvisational jazz and punk set him apart in bands such as Teenage Jesus and The Jerks, James Chance and The Contortions, and James White and The Blacks. Born James Siegfried in Milwaukee in 1953, Chance grew up in Wisconsin and attended the Wisconsin Conservatory of Music. After moving to New York City in 1975, he quickly immersed himself in both the free jazz and no-wave punk rock scenes, with his first band, Flaming Youth, and later with Teenage Jesus and the Jerks. Chance began to carve out his niche. In 1977, he formed The Contortions, a band known for their energetic fusion of jazz improvisation and punk rhythms, and their notorious live performances that often ended in physical confrontations with the audience. Chance's contributions to the No Wave movement were immortalized in the Brian Eno compiled album No New York, which featured The Contortions. Throughout his career, he adopted various personas and collaborated with numerous artists, including Lydia Lunch, with whom he co-founded Teenage Jesus and The Jerks. 
His musical journey was also shaped by his romantic partner and agent, Anya Phillips, who helped define his stage presence until her untimely death in 1981. Despite the turbulence and challenges he faced, including band breakups and health issues, Chance's resilience shone through. He continued to perform and record with notable works including the albums By and Off White with The Contortions and Sax Maniac with James White and the Blacks. His influence extended beyond music, as seen in his involvement in the soundtrack for Diego Cortez's film Grootsy Elvis and his performance in the film Downtown 81. In the 2000s, Chance reunited with original members of the Contortions for limited engagements and recorded new material. He also collaborated with bands like Blondie and Watchers, maintaining his relevance in the ever-evolving music scene. James Chance's final years were marked by health struggles, and he passed away from a gastrointestinal disease in East Harlem. His legacy, however, lives on through his groundbreaking contributions to music and his enduring impact on the no-wave movement. James Chance will be remembered as a fearless innovator, a dynamic performer, and a pivotal figure in the history of punk and jazz fusion. Anthea Silbert, who passed away at the age of 84 on June 23rd, was an acclaimed American film producer and costume designer. Her illustrious career, which spanned the modern era of American cinema, was marked by her exceptional talent and dedication to her craft. Born Anthea Giannakouros on October 6, 1939, in Brooklyn, New York, Silbert grew up in a close-knit Greek family. From a young age, she showed a keen interest in artistic activities, learning to sew from her grandmother. This early exposure to the arts paved the way for her future career. She went on to study art at Barnard College, further honing her skills and preparing for a life dedicated to creativity. Silbert's career in costume design was nothing short of remarkable. She was nominated twice for the Academy Award for Best Costume Design, first for the iconic film Chinatown, and then for Julia. Her keen eye for detail and her ability to bring characters to life through their attire set her apart in the industry. Her work not only enhanced the visual storytelling of these films, but also left a lasting impact on the art of costume design. In addition to her achievements in costume design, Silbert made significant contributions as a producer and executive producer. Her credits include Criss Cross and the television film Truman, the latter earning her an Emmy Award. She was also recognized by the Costume Designers Guild, receiving the Lacoste Career Achievement Award for Film at the 7th Annual Costume Designers Guild Awards in 2005. Silbert's career took another turn when she transitioned into executive production management roles at Warner Brothers and United Artists. She became known for her adept conflict resolution skills, helping filmmakers navigate challenges with studios. This phase of her career highlighted her versatility and her ability to excel in various facets of the film industry. A deep partnership with Goldie Hawn further defined Silbert's legacy. Together, they created the Hahn Silbert Movie Company, producing several successful films, including Private Benjamin, Protocol, and Something to Talk About. Anthea Silbert's contributions to film were vast and varied, reflecting her immense talent, creativity, and passion for storytelling. Her work continues to inspire and influence the industry, and she will be remembered as a pioneer who left an indelible mark on American cinema. Al Cresta, who passed away at the age of 72 on June 15, was a distinguished American Catholic broadcaster, journalist, and author. His life and work left an indelible mark on the Catholic community and beyond, characterized by his profound faith, intellectual rigor, and passionate commitment to sharing the gospel. Born in 1952, Al Cresta was a 1976 honors graduate of Michigan State University and pursued graduate studies in theology at Sacred Heart Major Seminary in Detroit and Ashland Theological Seminary. He began his pastoral career in 1986, leading Shalom Ministry in Taylor, Michigan. His engaging program, Talk from the Heart, became one of the top-rated Christian talk shows in the Detroit area during the 1980s and 90s, marking his rise to prominence as a Protestant pastor. However, the questions and challenges he encountered led him back to the Catholic Church of his upbringing, a journey he shared in the best-selling anthology Surprised by Truth. 
In 1997, Domino's Pizza founder Tom Monahan recruited Cresta to launch Ave Maria Communications, where he served as president and CEO. He hosted Cresta in the Afternoon, a nationally syndicated program produced by Ave Maria Radio and aired on EWTN Global Catholic Radio. The show reached millions of listeners across more than 350 stations, Sirius Satellite Radio, and numerous web streams. Known for his vigorous discussions and debates, Cresta engaged with prominent figures from various fields, offering insightful commentary on issues facing Americans and Catholics. Cresta's life took a dramatic turn in February 2003, when he lost his left leg to necrotizing fasciitis, a severe infection often referred to as flesh-eating bacteria. His extended recovery and eventual return to broadcasting deepened his understanding of suffering and hope, which he shared with his audience, offering comfort and inspiration. Throughout his career, Cresta's work was recognized by various media outlets, including BBC Radio, The Washington Times, National Catholic Reporter, and Christianity Today. He interviewed a wide array of guests, from Cardinal George Pell and democracy activist Jimmy Lay to former U.S. Senator Rick Santorum and papal biographer George Weigel. Breaking news. News 1. Jennifer Aniston is known for her dedication to fitness, and at 55 she's feeling stronger than ever. Aniston recently opened up about her workout routine and diet, revealing how she stays in top shape. Gone are the days of intense cardio and hour-long sessions. Now, Aniston focuses on more efficient workouts that fit her body's needs. I can do 20 minutes and get as good of a workout as if I work for an entire hour, she shared. During the pandemic and following a back injury, she discovered Volve, a low-impact fitness method using resistance-based equipment. It's such a mind-body connection, Aniston says, highlighting its benefits for both physical and mental health. Aniston's current routine includes streaming on-demand Pvolve classes and in-person sessions with trainer Danny Coleman. She loves the flexibility, saying, you can curate your workouts to whatever your mood is that day. In addition to Volve, Aniston incorporates Pilates and yoga. I always like to mix things up because it keeps things very interesting, she explains. Aniston's approach extends to her diet. She maintains a balanced eating plan, focusing on nutritious foods that support her active lifestyle. This holistic approach helps her stay fit and feel strong, proving that age is just a number. News 2. Austin is mourning the loss of a true jazz icon. Dr. James Polk, revered musician and educator, has died at the age of 83. The Austin Jazz Society confirmed his passing in a heartfelt post on Friday. Polk's illustrious career spanned decades, during which he performed with numerous jazz and blues ensembles. He was perhaps best known for his time as a member of the legendary Ray Charles's band, a tenure that showcased his immense talent to audiences worldwide. From 1990 to 1996, Polk shared his expertise as a music professor at Texas State University. He was also a founding member of the Austin Jazz Society and was inducted into their Hall of Fame in 2016 a testament to his significant contributions to the jazz community. The Austin Jazz Society honored Polk on Friday, calling him a great musician and a great human being whose legacy will live on through musicians of all ages who he taught and performed with. Polk's impact on the music world and his nurturing of future generations of musicians ensure that his legacy will continue to resonate.